What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here and in this video I'm going to be talking about code splitting. I'll be telling you why it's useful and I'll be showing you how to implement it in an existing project that I have. It will be quite a basic example because I want to show you how easy it is to actually implement and actually discuss the benefits of using it. So let's head over to my example project so I can show you how it might be useful to you. Alright guys, so here we are in an app that I've been working on in my live streams. It's very simple at the moment. Basically you have a contestant, it's a contestant leaderboard kind of page. But we, we have a few pages in here. There's a contestant page, a home page and a login page. And we also have a route for if uh, nothing was found. So that's something too. But uh, we'll deal with that later. Anyways. What we're actually looking at is we have a contestant page, login page, home page. All of these pages are here in my directory, contestant, uh, home, and login. And there's there's nothing too useful to, to see within that. If we look at our app here, we've got the home page, which just pretty much shows you a bunch of details. I actually have to log out. It just shows you a bunch of things. I have a friend working on this at the moment, so he might add records and stuff. But if you click on a person, you'll go to their contestant page, and you can go back to the, the page here. I know it's nothing beautiful, but it's just an example. There's that page, the home page here, the contestant page, and if you were to log in so that you could add people, you'd get to this login page. Uh, but pretty much, like we have three pages here, and if you could think about it, I want to explain this, this use of code splitting. So, Imagine code splitting like this. When you come to a React website or a React app that you, you're coming to, you have to download a whole bundle. So let's imagine this is your, your big bundle that you're downloading and, and this is your app right here. Now, there might be parts of your app that your your person might not see. Your user might just not see the, the app. So let's imagine like this forms the the home page and this forms the login page and then this forms the contestant page and like this can form some of the core of the app. Now instead of making the user download the whole the whole app bundle, we can just make them download the core and whatever page they're on. So what you'd essentially do is because I'm using the roots as an example, we would have to lazy load these components in and render some fallback for while these components are being loaded in. Uh, so obviously we need to we automatically going to uh, fetch like the whole core of our app. So so that part we've sorted with. Um, let's just name it whole bundle. And then we have like a uh, home page, login and contestant because we're looking at contestant. And then this down here is, is like core. So core will always be downloaded automatically, just like normally the whole bundle would be downloaded automatically. But in order to implement some setup where we just download the core, which happens automatically, we need to um, basically split how we're going to download home, login, and contestant, and we'll only download them on command. So in order to do this, you use two components from React. The one is called lazy, which allows us to lazily fetch our components, and the other one is called suspense, which we need to wrap our lazy components so React knows how to deal with them. Now, the way to lazy load a page is pretty simple. You just say const page equals lazy, and then you make a callback to import the page that you want to load. So you can import like, I don't know, from pages slash default if you wanted to. I'm in this route here and I'm just going back and fetching my pages. So we can do that with all of these. We can do it with contestant page and get uh, our contestant from that page there. So everything is good there. And we can, we can do the exact same thing with home and login. So I'm just going to actually copy this, say home page, and get it from home. And I'll do the same thing with login and get login page from pages slash login. Now this would work, but the one thing we're missing is React doesn't actually know that we need to specifically handle these these lazy loaded stuff. So the problem is it will try and fetch us and all of bomb out and say like this didn't work because it wasn't found. So what we have to do is wrap the components that we're lazy loading in with suspense. Now these are the three components that are being lazy loaded in. This one is part of our core. So we don't have to worry about wrapping that in suspense. So I'm going to wrap in our suspense tag over here and we're going to close it. Now this is pretty good but we also need to render some sort of fallback. So in here, I'm going to write fallback. And in here, I'm just going to render a simple div that says loading page. 
because we're fetching the specific page. Now this is actually all you need to get going with um, lazy loading. I think it's freaking out here for some weird reason. I don't actually know why. Why are you freaking out? Home page, all that stuff. Login page, contestant page. Oh, it's because I've I've forgot to remove these. Right. So now this this is our app. It's it's lazy loaded. It is working. Um, it's supposed to be pages, not page. Again, making errors in the middle of this wonderful tutorial that I'm trying to make. But yeah, our app runs now, and if we were to refresh, it says loading page there first. So that's pretty perfect. If we go here, it's loading page immediately. And now, here's an example. If we go back, it didn't have to say loading page anymore. We haven't gone to login yet, so we hit here. It quickly said loading page, and, and then we got to the login page. But now that all the components, all of those little bundles have been loaded, we can go between pages without without any worrying about loading pages. So it's just the initial load. And essentially what this does is now that we don't have to download the whole bundle anymore, we just download things on demand. So the core gets downloaded immediately. We need to download that so that we can, you know, get our app at its initial state so that we have this, we have our router and all that and switches and stuff done. But we have decided like, okay, so the user will download the core. They need to get the core. That's important. Now, the reason we split our stuff at our roots is because what if the user never goes to the login page? We don't need to load that login page unnecessarily. Or what if they never go to the contestant ID page? They, they'll they like, you know, they might just uh, not have to worry about it. I mean, essentially, we could assume that they're always going to go to the home page. So we could load just the home page. But what if they use the app and or they, they got a link from someone that was linking to their contestant ID? So what if they went directly to the contestant page and didn't actually see the home or login page. It would be better to show them something upfront first and then just download the extra little bits of the components as we need them. Now, it's a common practice to start with doing this in your roots, to lazy load all your roots because that's where most of this change is gonna happen. Like a, a user will most likely not go onto all of your roots. You can see that in most website analytics. They don't go to every route, they just go to like three out of five or something like that. They'll, they'll go to like one or two routes. So they don't need to download your entire app. Now you can do this at a, a higher level or lower level if you wanted to. Say um, maybe like you, you're just going to the login page of an app and there is no public page. Um, you don't want to load the whole app until they've actually successfully logged in. So you can make the login loading go much quicker by not loading the whole rest of the app and, and kind of just load things on demand as the user needs them. Let's say you had a page that had a lot of different views in it. Um, you might not use all the views. So rather just wrap all those views in the suspense and they will only get loaded as you require them. And bear in mind, this works quite nicely because let's say, as I showed in the example, you've loaded the home page, then you go to the login page. So you load the login page. If you go back to the home page, it doesn't have to reload the home page. It just has the home page as is because you've already loaded it all in and it's saved in the cache. So that's just one of the wonderful things about this lazy loading technique. Um, this, this remains like if you refresh the browser, it's not going to um, have to go and reload it all because it's loaded it before. So it's just this nice little thing with making your React app much smoother in what well, doesn't actually end up being smoother. You can put anything in here as the fallback, but uh, it's much quicker to download. So it will take less time to download your whole bundle because you split the bundle up into smaller pieces. So that's pretty much what code splitting entails. I hope this is useful to you, that you find it nice. Um, lots of people hear the word code splitting and think, wow, that's some advanced thing. How am I ever going to implement it? But really, it's not that difficult to implement. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something quite useful and new. And I hope that you are able to put this into practice with your projects out there. Anyways, guys, um, I'll catch you in the next video. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And yeah, this does extend out quite far. I mean, you can code split your reducers and stuff if you were using Redux. There, This goes quite, quite far and beyond. But there's different methods to it. This is just an easy way to get started with it. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And I will chat to you guys soon. All the best. Cheers.